Hey folks, we just saw Star Trek Beyond, the third in the reboot series. Jolie, what are your first impressions? I wanted to weep like a baby the whole time. I am going to miss Anton Yelchin a lot. I didn't mind it. It was good. I gotta say, I am disappointed by this film. I think it only makes you realize how good of a director J.J. Abrams was. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, the writers, Orki Kurtzman and Damon Lindelof, I mean, they had flaws, but those fil films were designed to entertain an audience. This film, I was a little bit baffled by it. It felt like the worst days of the next generation films. In some parts, it was a little bit slow. Hey guys, I'd like to give a warm welcome back to our old pal, Erica Heinsbrook. Erica, how are you? Fantastic. <laughs> awesome. And who's your pal here? Uh, Dan Burns. Hi there. Nice to meet you, Dan. Okay, I'm going to ask you guys now. First of all, have you ever seen a Star Trek film before? No. Wow. What about you, Dan? I did see Star Trek 2009. I did not see Into Darkness, though. So this was my first time in about five or six years. Okay, okay. So, Erica, you've never seen a Star Trek film. What was your impression of this one? I thought it was awesome. I didn't know what to expect, but I thought it was really, really cool. <laughs> about a half hour into the movie, I noticed, wow, this action's awesome. I'm really enjoying this. No one's spoken for 20 minutes. It's almost like they forgot about dialogue and forgot about character. And so in that way, it's like, yeah, the spectacle's great, the action's great. Mm -hmm. But the J.J. Abrams films just always, it was full of these great characters having great moments and it was just really exciting. And even though they felt a little bit rushed, this film felt almost slow because there was no character interaction. But that, well, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I would argue against that actually. Mm. There's something really sly that he does between his characters and it's, it's a testament to how he gets like opposites to attract. Mm. The, like casual side glances, little winks to each yes. other. That how else do you think Dwayne the Rock Johnson and Paul Walker got along so well? They were directed by this gentleman, and he, he. Did, I think that he took these characters into a different, um, to a different space because uh, we kind of already know them. Apparently, we don't know Sulu that well, though. Hello. Yeah, surprise. Um, <laughs> I'll give him credit for that because I did notice that in that in this film, and it is different from the way Abrams did it. Abrams was a little bit more in your face and almost a little bit forced. Yeah. This was more subtle. I just wish there was more of it. How does this one compare to the one from 2009? Well, you know, I think that uh, it definitely it definitely lived up for the hype for me because I was coming in because I saw the one from 2009 and I really enjoyed it. I didn't put my expectations too high and. Luckily enough, it delivered to me. I enjoyed it a lot. This man is known for the Fast and the Furious films. And I feel like um, it's very apparent that he's a very good a action director. Mm -hmm. But then it's like he doesn't know how to marry uh, the CGI and the action. So it was like almost a lot of CGI at, at one point or not enough. Mm -hmm. Or CGI where it was really unnecessary. Uh, like when they were riding in to their diversion. Um, they didn't need to CGI that at all, and it was totally CGI. Uh, when they were walking into the enemy territory, like you see Uhura and all the other like, captives, that was CGI'd. So Erica, were you able to follow the story, even though you've never seen a Star Trek movie before? Yeah, um, I was familiar with the character names, at least. And mm -hmm. it made, it made m mostly a lot of sense. I can't follow action that easily, though. But, um... I know that my favorite part was definitely just that it was funny right at the beginning and I yeah. had I didn't know what to expect from it at all but it it was hilarious just at the start so that's cool. At first I was a little bit impressed because it was more serious than the last two films but then it just started to lose me and then once mm -hmm. they landed on that planet honestly as as far as like an uh, an audience member I lost interest in what they were doing because it ceased to become a Star Trek film for a good half hour to 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Now when they were in this gigantic space station called Yorktown, that was mind-blowing. That was one of the most science fiction-y things I've seen in a Star Trek film ever. It reminded me of like the Foundation novels or something. It was just yeah. mind-blowing. I really enjoyed that. It reminded me of a Kristen Dunst film I just okay. saw. But okay. like, that was something that I saw and I said, okay, this is what I was expecting. Did you have a certain character that stood out that you really liked? Yeah, J Jayla? Jayla, she was interesting. She had really cool makeup. I thought so too. I hope she's part of the regular crew for the next movie. Yeah, I'd watch it if she was. They always use the ship tumbling and them having to like run through it at odd angles. Like everyone wants to see the captain running on the walls of I think it's great. the Enterprise, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. 
I mean, they didn't figure out how to do it until the last couple of movies. Now they're doing it, maybe overdoing it, but I still loved it, though. I didn't yeah. care. And I just wish the plot was less murky. And it was almost like I felt like it was building to something much more. Like I was hoping that at the end, oh, no, this is going to be either a turn to the Borg or this is going to be something else. But it didn't really lead to much at all. And so I was a little bit no. disappointed by the overall arc. Even the way in which they defeat the enemy or the overcome, um, it just ended suddenly. In fact, even the last film was a slightly anticlimactic in a similar way. And it's strange because I was, I had such high hopes coming into this because I just rewatched the the last one. So Dan, what do you hope to see in the next Star Trek film? I like to see, I'd like to see a bit of new stuff. If I'm being honest, like the last couple of movies, they've had, uh, you know, going into unnatured territory and um, finding an enemy that's never been seen before. I'd like some more, like I don't want to say simplicity, but something a bit, you know, back to the Star Trek roots of, you know, going on adventures, going into. Um, Kind of the basic stuff like for this movie not to go into any detail but like the enterprise wasn't very prominent in this movie and i think what people loved about the original star trek and the show and the next generation was the fact that they were on the enterprise the whole time and they were on the bridge and i think a lot of people when they were kids they wanted to be on that bridge and you know control the enterprise themselves so i don't know just something a bit more simplistic for me but I did enjoy it, yeah. I have to say, at this point, the novelty of the reboot, unfortunately, has worn off. And so I'm looking forward to the Star Trek TV series, which will have a new crew. And I think that's the direction that they should go with. Yeah, that's, that's totally cool. Space is picking that one up for all of us Canadians. So worry not. We're in safe hands. Erica, do you recommend this film to your pals? Yeah, absolutely. I think it was really cool. Dan, do you recommend this film? Of course I do, especially to Star Trek fans. <laughs> awesome. And non-Star Trek fans. Are you a Star Trek fan now? Yeah, why not? Oh, great. <laughs> Good to hear, Erica. Welcome back, by the way. Thank you. And welcome to you, Dan. Thank you so much. Do you recommend this film? Oh, uh, yeah. Do you know what? This one's for the Voyage Home lovers. No whales, but... To me, this is for the Nemesis lovers. No, and, it's not. And there's not too many of those. <laughs> it's the weakest of the reboot films. I do recommend it, but I'm gonna have to watch it again to really make a final call on this. But I am, I am disappointed by it. It's fine. It was a good film, but not nearly as good as the first two. Sorry, I'm just disappointed. This one's for the journey home lovers. Journey home. Oh, voyage the voyage home. home.